Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm so glad to see people coming into today's webinar. I'm Becky Robinson, and today I'm going to give you an inside view in how I'm planning my book marketing. So I'm really excited to interact with you today. As you come in, I'd love to have you say hi in the chat um, so that I can acknowledge that you're here. Um, so if you want to take a quick moment and say hello, let me know where you're calling in from and we will have some time throughout the broadcast and you know later for questions and answers so um just love the chance to interact with you hey francis from atlanta um i'm not sure how to say your name but i'm going to say eli in the dc area northern virginia is eli okay um Eliyahu. Oh, wow. That is like really different than I would have said it. So hi to Anita in Johannesburg, South Africa. Eliyahu. Eliyahu. Did I say it right? Eliyahu. I get to learn something new today. Um, well, I'm so glad that you're all here. Thank you for the phonetic pronunciation, Eliyahu. And uh, we are going to get started in just a few moments. Again, I'm going to be giving you today an insider look at how I am planning my own book marketing. Hey to Greg in Texas. Good to see you. Hi to Melissa in Ontario. Good morning to Jim in Anchorage. Jim, I'm looking forward to seeing you at the workshop next week. And, uh, you know, maybe you're going to get to learn this twice. Hi to Nikki. You might get to learn this twice, too. <laughs> um, all righty. Well, um, so one of the things that I want to say a few things about book marketing, but I also, um, for those of you who might not know me, always like to start these webinars with a chance for you to get to know me a little bit. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and get some slides rolling for you. Um, and if these slides are helpful, we can definitely send them as a PDF later um, so that you have a reference. You don't need to have to scribble them all down. So we are going to take an inside look today at my book marketing plan and a little bit about me before we start. Um, you may know that that I'm the founder and CEO of Weaving Influence. Weaving Influence is a digital marketing agency and we're a team of talented people from across the US who work to help our clients with all aspects of digital marketing and we specialize in launching books. Um, a few things about me, I don't usually show my kids and my husband uh, publicly, although I've done it once or twice. Uh, my husband's in law enforcement, so we like to keep everybody safe, but here's uh, two of my pet children, my daughter's cat, Philippa, my favorite dog, Lottie, and a friend of mine, Carrie, who I run with. Running is a huge thing that I do when I'm not working. Um, okay, so as we dive in today, I want to start with this graphic. And if you've seen it before, go ahead and say yes in the chat, um, because I won't spend a ton of time on it. But as we dive into today, we're going to be talking about all the possible tactics that you can use in marketing your book. And I want to help you have a framework for thinking about those tactics. And this is the graphic that I use. I I've been using a, a version of it for a long time in my company. I created a new version of it uh, for my new book, which is called Reach. Um, and so we call this the Reach Framework now. I, I didn't have a name for it before. So I want to quickly uh, walk you through the Reach Framework because it will inform the approach to book marketing planning that I'm going to talk about on today's webinar. So when you want to think about digital marketing and creating your online presence, your very most important asset is your website, which is, as you see, at the center of the REACH framework. Um, there's some icons on the house. So the house represents your website, which is your home online. The icons on the house represent the content that you create to share through your website. And it's important that you make sure that your best content is on your website. And then the mailbox next to your website represents your email marketing list. And one of the reasons why email marketing is important is because it gives you access to be directly connected to your audience at any time. So I want to ask a question. If you noticed the outage of Instagram and Facebook a couple of days ago, did you panic about whether or not you could reach your audience? Go ahead and give me a quick yes or no in the chat. Like, did you feel very disconnected? Did you feel very worried? Um, I'm seeing a couple of no's. I'm glad to hear that. I was too busy working. I barely registered the outage because I was in the middle of the workday. Um, but one of the reasons why I put so much focus on your website and your email list is because those are places that you own and control and they are not at the whim of technology. 
Now, um, social media is a great place to find and form relationships, and it's a great way to expand and amplify your messages, but it can't be what you depend upon for reaching your audience. So I'm glad to see a bunch of no's on that question. Um, and so as we talk through uh, my approach to book marketing, you know, you'll see these various areas represented, but for just for now, as an introduction, the four, um, let's see, the four kind of circles of this a reach framework that are most important are what I call the reach framework fundamentals, and they include everything out to this red circle. What you want to make sure you do is that you optimize everything in the red circle and in internally before you make a big investment in any of the things on the outer circle. And the reason is because, you know, if you're going to invest in, for example, traditional or digital PR, the first thing that any journalist is going to do is going, they're going to take a look at how your story is being played out online. Do you have credibility through your online presence? And so if your website is a mess, then it's going to be far less likely uh, that you'll be able to get those media wins that you want. And if you're going to invest in virtual or live events, you want to make sure that any of the people who meet you at those events have a way of staying in touch with you longer term, which is why you want to use any virtual or live events to get people to your own mailing list. So that's just a quick overview of that. Uh, and before we take an inside look at my book launch planning, I want to do a quick quick check in. I'm going to run a poll here for you. And I'm curious. Uh, huh? Oh, I'm, I'm looking at like a, an old poll. OK, here we go. Uh, here is the question. What phase of your book launch are you in? So if you are more than six months out from the publication of your book, if you have a book coming next year, um, then you are likely in the building phase. If you are like me within a six month window of when your book is going to launch, you are in the working phase. If your book is uh, had a publication date within the last 30 days or in the 30 days that are coming, the month surrounding your book launch is the launching phase. And once your book has launched, then you would be in the advancing phase. Um, now, now, just a little silly thing about the question. You know, I, I think that anyone who doesn't have a book, who dreams of having a book, there are actually two right answers to this poll uh, because you're always in the building phase as you dream of writing a book. So no one had a wrong answer if they said they didn't have a book, uh, but I would love to have those of you who don't have books yet to shift your thinking and to consider that, that you are in the building phase now to prepare to market your book. Alrighty, so just taking a quick look, it looks like about a quarter of you don't have a book yet, you're dreaming of a book, and I'm going to say that you're also in the building phase. So about half of you are more than six months out from the launch of your book. I am the only one on this call in the working phase. Um, looks like we have a couple of people who are in the launching phase and one person who is past the launch of their book and in the advancing phase. So thanks for taking a moment to share that with me. Um, and now what we're going to do is take that dive and insider look into how I am planning my book marketing. I think I noticed that Mike is here and Mike has seen this already, um, but that's okay. He can learn it twice. Um, I find that you can never really hear two things too many, many times. Okay, so if we were previously looking at the REACH framework, and so what I've done is I've used this free tool that Google has called a Jamboard. Um, go ahead and tell me in the chat with a quick yes or no if you've ever used a Jamboard before. Um, and Anita, glad to hear you are definitely in the building phase. So. Um, it looks like I have one nope on Jamboard. Now, in order to access Jamboard, you do have to have a Google email address um, and you can create one for free. So this is not, there's no barrier to entry on this Jamboard idea. Um, there's another tool that's more sophisticated with more colors um, called Miro and Miro has some really lovely boards, but I'm going the free route and you can go the free route too. And what I've done here is I have translated all of the areas of possible tactics for book marketing and each of those areas has its own um, page on this Jamboard. So I told you earlier that your website is your most important asset in your online presence. It's also your most important asset um, as it relates to marketing your book. And one of the things that you need to do as you start to plan your book marketing is to decide if you have more than one website, which website will be the home of your book marketing and uh, I always give authors the advice that you want to have your book up on your website as soon as you can. 
no later than 30 days before the book is set to pub, but ideally at least 90 days before. And as you start to think about getting your website ready for your book launch, one of the things you want to do is invest in photography. You want to make sure your photos are up to date and attractive and, um, you know, thoughtfully express your personal brand. So I'm going to give you a quick glimpse. My new website at BeckyRobinson.com is under construction. And, um, you know, we had hoped actually to have it done sooner, but I'm still well within my own goal of 90 days before launch because we are hoping to launch my new website maybe in the next I hope two to three weeks uh, by November 1st, and my book comes out April 1st. So what, we're well within the range of that. Um, I like that photo a lot. You know, we went back and forth because I had this amazing photo shoot, and some of my team thought it looked like I have a stomach ache in this picture, but I, re I really liked the picture. Um, so I want to give you a quick glimpse because, um, you know, the most important part is the book page. And so I'm really having fun with this. Uh, side note, we do have a picture of me holding my book, but my book does not physically exist yet. So the way that we accomplish this is, you know, the magic of Photoshop. We took some photos with another book that's a similar size, trim size, and all of that. And our amazing graphic designer Photoshopped my book cover so that you can land here and see my see my book. Um, so there, are, uh, we've had uh, webinars before about you know the the components that you want to include on your book page. But I'll just quickly show you mine just as an inside look. Um, now, as it relates to samples, we always recommend that you have a sample chapter of your book on the web website. And again, that's going to be tied to the timing because we don't have a sample ready for my book because I'm in the copy editing phase. And so we're exploring as a team, you know, what can we put here before we have a sample chapter that will help, you know, people be interested in the book when it comes out. We're giving people also here a glimpse of some of the content in the book by talking about the four reach commitments that I outline in my book. And then I'm sharing a little bit here with folks about my hope for them when they read the book. There, there may be some other components that we add to the book page as we go. Um, but if you are planning out your book marketing, you really want to think about, you know, what, what components do you have when you launch that help people find out about the book? And then what can you add along the way? Um, to help people really understand if, if your book is for them or not. Um, so you'll see here, one of the things my team, team and I did, the cool thing about Jamboard is you can just create sticky notes and every idea that you have, you can just write them. So uh, a note to myself is um, uh, an opt-in. You know, We need a place on my book page where people can sign up to hear about the book as it gets closer. Um, so how do we miss that, right? Um, and so if you were to, use my method for planning your book launch, you could use a Jamboard like this one in the first tab as web. So I'm going to walk you through the other tabs, the other areas that we're thinking about as we plan my book marketing. We're also thinking about email marketing. And as I mentioned, staying in touch via email is one of the most important things that you can do. Um, you know, if you open up an empty Jamboard, you can start to create sticky notes with your ideas. And I'll show you you later what you do once you have the ideas. So we've thought about ideas related to content marketing. So what's the content that I can create over time that will help share the message of my book? And yes, it's overwhelming, the number of things that you can do. And so uh, we'll talk about this later in the webinar, but you definitely need to be realistic about what's possible in terms of all the areas on the Jamboard, but particularly content marketing, which is time intensive. Now, the good news on content marketing as it relates to a book launch is the book itself is a valuable asset that you can reshape and share with people um, in different formats to spread the message of your book. So we also have been thinking about social and organic social. And one of the tactics that we've been using for my book and I'll just open up my Instagram here really fast to show you. Uh oh, that's not, that's my story. You don't want to see that. Um, one of the things that we've been doing is about every other week, we'll drop a new quote from my book. And my team created some custom Canva graphics. And so every week or two, um, they'll create a new quote graphic from my book. And I'm sharing those out on my Instagram. Um, so that's an example of, you know, the book marketing plans in action. So we, t we talk about what are we going to do for social from an organic standpoint to market my book? What are we going to do from a paid social? So that would include any social ads like Facebook ads or Amazon ads. Um, 
And let's see. So we've also been thinking about a launch team. So for those of you who might be new to book marketing, um, it's really awesome to gather a people, a group of people who can support your book through Amazon reviews, through social sharing. And so as we've been planning my book marketing, we've been thinking about what we want to do with our launch team when the time comes. We're also thinking about how to mobilize my network or, you know, if you're thinking about your book, you definitely want to think about how you can mobilize the people in your life who can support your book. We are thinking about media relations and creating a media kit and strategy and pitching media for articles and interviews. We're thinking about what virtual events we can create to engage people um, as we bring the book to the world. We've thought about whether or not in-person events will be a reality. Um, we've thought about print collateral, so creating, you know, physical items that um, tie into the book that we can send with our packages or give out to people that we meet in real life. Um, we've thought about speaker pitching and is this book, uh, you know, something that I can speak about in various places and if so, how do we make that happen? Uh, we've thought about bulk sales strategy or a micro bulk sales strategy. So because my book is more geared toward individuals and not really necessarily uh, geared toward corporations, one of the ideas I have is to do bulk sales and try to sell the book in groups of 10. Um, also because our company is celebrating a 10th anniversary next year around the same time the book comes out. So you might want to think about for your book, you know, is your book one that people would buy in bulk? And if not in bulk, could you look at a micro bulk sales strategy to sell more than one book at a time to people? And, and what might you do to entice them to that? Um, finally, we're thinking about book-related resources, so additional content that could support the people who buy the book. Um, we're thinking about video assets. We're thinking about a pre-order campaign. We're thinking about all the graphics that can support the book around the web. And then there's a blank one. And so what I did as it relates to planning my book marketing is we started with just creative and putting down every idea that we had. Um, the next step really is to think about of all the ideas and all the sticky notes that we put on the Jamboard, what, what is actually possible and reasonable and sustainable for us to decide to do? You know, what fits our time allocation? what fits our money allocations. And then from there, I opened up a spreadsheet and I started to go through each, uh, each Jamboard page, page by page. So you'll notice I have some uh, to-do to -do items here related to web media, but I started one page at a time. And then once I was done, based on whatever target date I gave the activity, I sorted this timeline so that it was an order of time instead of by category. So step one is put all the creative ideas on the Jamboard um, in these various areas. Step two is from all the creative ideas that you uh, come up with, think about what's actual and possible. And you could even, you know, color code, you know, based on if you could actually do it. So I could, I could edit this and I could make everything that we're actually going to do out of the creative, creative ideas. I could make those all green, for example. And then what I did was I went back through slide by slide to assign a due date and target date for all the various tactics. Now, I know I'm a book marketer and I do this for a living, so I could come up with my own due dates. And you may not be sure on the timing of when you should do various book marketing activities. And so I, I will point you to another resource. So on our website, there's a free ebook called Publishing and Marketing Timelines. And in that resource, we do have outlined phase by phase when these various activities should fall in. And so you could use those based on the number of months before launch. You could use those timelines to be able to get an approximation of what dates you could select for your various activities. So wow, that was a lot. Um, and so I'm curious what questions you have about how I went about uh, planning my own book marketing. There's actually one more step even beyond the ones I showed you. Um, from this timeline, my team also uses a tool called Basecamp for project management. So once I created these deadlines in the spreadsheet timeline, we also created associated tasks in Basecamp so that those pop up as we do our work and we're reminded of the various timelines or deadlines related to the book. Um, I'm going to go back to my slide deck for one second, because if you feel overwhelmed, uh, you are not alone. And at various points of planning your book marketing, you may have to have a, 
moment with yourself where you think about, you know, at the top here, all these gears represent the very, the many, many, many possibilities there are with marketing your book. And you have to really sift through those to see, you know, which ones are ones that you yourself can implement, which ones are ideas that someone else could implement on your behalf if you outsource to a volunteer or to a paid support person or an agency like mine. And then of all those ideas, which ones do you just have to let go of? And it might be that you're letting go of it for a moment, or it might be that you're letting go of it forever. Um, but, you know, obviously all of us have so many things going on in our lives. And when you get into marketing your book, it can feel overwhelming. So it's, it's important to really sift through what you can and want to invest in. So let's see, I think that concludes these slides for now. Um, but I want to make sure that if you have any questions, um, that we get to those. Um, and you may be curious about, you know, how much time am I spending on my own book marketing? Um, you know, one of the things that was hard for me to understand um, while I was marketing books with authors, but hadn't yet been on my own book journey you know what i would hear a lot from authors is like oh you know i'm so busy in the writing phase i can't think about marketing or you know oh i just got my edits back and i have to put my at my marketing on hold while i work on my edits and i would get a little bit frustrated and potentially um i would you know, be impatient because I know how critical the marketing aspects are. And um, I would feel like we were getting behind if, if you know, authors couldn't effectively toggle between the writing priorities and the marketing priorities. But now that I'm in, in it myself, I realize that it's, it, it's, it is hard to be able to balance and focus both of those things at the same time. Um, and I don't think I answered the question of how much time I'm spending. I don't think I know yet. Um, but I do have a question here from, uh, oh my goodness, and now I need the phonetic spelling again. <laughs> I don't want to mess it up. There's nothing worse than me someone messing up your name. So Eliyahu has a question. He says, in your marketing, you definitely mix together your personal and professional sides. What's the marketing logic for giving the professional service? a personal face. I love that question. Um, and the reason is because people connect to people. Have you ever, you know, watched an author and their branding is very corporate? You might feel like you have a difficult time relating to that. Um, what I found always in marketing is pe people connect to people. So the more personal, the more real, the more um, connecting, the more authentic, uh, the more likely that people are to um, connect with you and relate to you and remember you. And so that's why I definitely uh, always encourage people to make some choices, of course. Um, if you watched my uh, webinar on author branding, you know, every, every author does have a unique brand. So you want to think about what's the value you want to bring, what's your unique personality, and then how do you express your unique personality through your online presence? And, you know, what you see is what you get with me. <laughs> Um, Megan, who's here helping me on the webinar together before we got on, like I was rushing to eat lunch, I was rushing to pull my slides together. You know, this is just what you see is what you get with me. Um, and so it would not be authentic to my brand for me to put out this kind of professional buttoned up, like um, corporate content in my marketing. It just wouldn't match with who I am. So there is this one part where um, where you have to think about, you know, who, who is, what is the brand that you want to bring to the world and making sure that what you share fits it. Um, but I definitely have a bias of letting that personal shine through. So we do have time for at least like one or more questions, if anyone has any. And if you want to come over and ask me your question with your voice and let me see your face, you can use the hand raise function, which is in the bottom of the Zoom panel. And I'd be happy to bring you over to the side of the webinar to ask me a question. We probably have time for one of those. So to the question of, you know, how much time are you spending on your marketing? Because I asked it, but I didn't answer it. My team and I are still trying to work through that, but I do have, um, a place where I'm delegating to others um, and a, a woman 
on my team, Aubrey is project managing my book marketing and doing a lot of the behind the scenes blocking and tackling some of the parts that I choose to do myself. I, I do all my own Instagram posting unless it's like promoting a client book or event, in which case there is someone behind the scenes at times doing some promoting on my Instagram. Most of what you see on LinkedIn from me is written and posted by my team. Um, same with Twitter. And then on Facebook, I hardly ever post. I'm not a big fan at the moment. Um, and, but so if you see something about authors or clients or events on my Facebook, that came from my team. But if it's like about my kids or personal, then it came from me. All right. Great. A question from my friend, Nikki. Nikki is working on a new book, but launched her last book in May. When do I make the switch about marketing to the new book? Um, I will tell you that a trigger I often use is when you have a final cover. Now that said, um, because your other book is still fairly new, if you had a cover on the new book now, I wouldn't switch now. Um, what I might do is work backwards for, um, you know, really thinking about when is that book going to launch, Nikki? So if you identify that the new book is going to launch in, I don't know, let me pick a, a month, November 2022, then I might go back about six months and I might make a first formal announcement about six months before the book is going to come out. Um, that said, it's always really interesting and fun to share your journey as an author. So you can tell people that you're working on a new book or, you know, talk about the journey, which I think I've already seen you doing. I saw something about 60,000 words. That is a lot of words, Nikki. Um, but at any rate, I wouldn't do like the more kind of formal marketing until about six months before. And honestly, I wouldn't ramp up to talk about a new book very much before about three months before a new book. Um, what you can also do, which I think is really interesting and fun, is if you're on social media and active on social media, follow the big guns, you know, follow the Brene Browns and the John Acuffs and the uh, Don Millers and see what they're doing. I know like Donald Miller has a new book coming in January and he really just started to talk about it a month ago. Um, and you know, he has a traditionally published book. And so he's known about it longer than a month ago. Um, but you obviously want to give room for your other content to breathe and, you know, waiting until four to six months before is a useful, uh, guideline, I think. So Nikki, uh, tell me if that helps, or if you have more questions, we're going to be hanging out next week at the workshop so we can talk about them then. All right, I have a question from Ellie. Is all of this marketing similar for an interactive ebook? Um, and I, I think the answer is yes. Um, and one of the things I didn't say on this call is that as you sort through all the tactics related to book marketing, you have to make sure that the approaches that you choose match up with your big picture goals. So, you know, people write books for different reasons. And whatever the reason is that you wrote that book should inform the way that you're going to market the book. Um, and so whatever reason you wrote the interactive ebook, that reason should inform how you market it. Um, and unfortunately, we don't have time to get into that today. Um, but we definitely have some blog posts or uh, podcast episodes that talk about the importance of, you know, finding your why, identifying your goals. So if your goal is to, you know, sell 15,000 copies the first year, then your, your activities and um, tactics are going to be different than if your goal is, you know, to reach your existing connections with your book, you know, and sell a thousand books in the first year. So before we go today, I do want to uh, tell you again, go back to the slides and um, give you a, a couple of possible action steps from today's webinar. Um, we do have upcoming next week on Thursday and Friday, the Reach More Readers Workshop. There is a fee associated with the workshop. But if you'd like to sign up, you can use the coupon code WISAVE100 to save $100 um, off the workshop. It is going to be small. It's going to be interactive. We're going to be in a Zoom meeting, not on a Zoom webinar. Everybody's going to be face-to-face. -face. We've planned some really fun activities and ways for people to interact. And we are going to cap it at about like 15 people. Um, so it is really going to be a chance for you to do a deep dive to get some real marketing planning done. We would love to have you. If you have questions, you can always email me. And if you would like a copy of the Jamboard that I showed today, 
with all of kind of the specific to my book stuff removed so that you can start one. Sorry, I need water. Um, hmm. Excuse me. So, so that you can start your own, go ahead and send me an email, Becky at weavinginfluence.com, and I can make a copy of the Jamboard and send it to your email address. And that can be yours for free. And you can use it to start to create some ideas around your book marketing plans. Um, I'm trying to think. I thought I had another call to action. So I did mention earlier in the call the publishing and marketing timelines resource. So if you go to weavinginfluence.com forward slash, I think, ebooks, you'll find that resource there. It is available for free for download. Um, and thanks for being here. Next month, we have a slightly different book marketing webinar. We're always the first Wednesday of the month. But next month, I have a guest, uh, Lucinda Halpern from Luc uh, Lucinda Literary. She's an agent. A literary agent is going to be joining me, and she's going to be talking about the value of an agent and what it takes to make a great pitch if you would like to have a literary agent. Um, so it'll be you know, mixing it up a little bit for next month's free webinar. If you're already registered for this one, you're already registered for the other one. It's a whole series. So you'll get a reminder. Hope to see you there. Have a fantastic day.